Wake Forest follow in the UPI top 10. Six through uh, 10, UCLA, Utah, Arizona State, Tennessee, and Kentucky. An assistant tennis pro in Cromwell has been busy at his craft since Thursday night. I'm talking nonstop tennis now, folks. Mark Goldberg tells us all about it. It's for a good cause, too. See Michael Gazer. See Michael Gazer play tennis. See Michael Gazer play 120 straight hours of tennis. You see Michael Gazer is raising money to help fight muscular dystrophy. I was trying to think, you know, what would be the biggest thing I could do in the game? Because I'm not the player yet to do what the, you know, Borg and the guys are doing. So I thought of this, and they all said, you're crazy. I said, well, it must be a good idea then. The Guinness World Record for this sort of thing is 105 hours held by two men, and Mike came prepared to beat it. Plenty of tennis shoes, socks, food, and mental toughness. People ask, you know, oh, did, how'd you get ready for it, you know, and what are you going to stay up five nights in a row for? <laughs> I mean, what for? I mean, he had second thoughts about this little assignment last Friday morning with just eight hours behind him, but now... My goal was 9 o'clock, 120, and if I, feel, if I feel good, I'm not the kind of guy, if, you know, if I can know I can do 125, I ain't going to stop at 120. Every other game, he's allowed a 90-second break, a total of five minutes per hour, that's it. His meals are brought in, his dirty clothes taken out. Does Jerry Lewis know about this? <laughs> I hope so. I want to be on Teleton in September, you know. <laughs> and this is what it's all about. This is five-year-old John Swistak of Meriden, the New Haven County muscular dystrophy poster child for 1981. Michael tired? 90 hours of tennis at this point, he destroyed me. I'm going to get to 120 if I have to crawl there. And everything, if I feel like it, I don't know where I'll stop. I'll go until I, they drag me away. If you'd like to make a pledge, the address is Michael's Fight. Care of Courtside at Cromwell, 10 Hillside Road, Cromwell, Connecticut, 06416. Mark Olberg, 30 Sports. Soon, we're not getting any up. 7 to 5, Johnny Miller won the LA Open, and Virginia beat Notre Dame. We don't have time to show that footage. Okay, Bob. Fortunately. A little more sports. The game is tennis, but the sport is really endurance. We're told the money will go to charity, but the glory will all belong to a tennis player from Middletown. That is, if he can keep playing until Tuesday. If Mike Gazer has his way, soon another Guinness World Book record will be broken. Mike's trying to play singles tennis longer than anyone else in the world has ever done. Mike began playing last Thursday night at 9 o'clock. He hopes to beat the old record of 105 hours by at least 15 hours. And that means he'll have to continue playing until 9 o'clock Tuesday night. Right now, Mike is over halfway to his goal, and he told me during one of his hourly five-minute breaks, he's sure he'll make it all the way. I thought I would make it right from the beginning, you know, just because I'm proud, I have my pride, but just being here, I mean, everybody's proud, proud of me, it's nice. Uh, the support's been very good? Yeah, support's unbelievable. Mike's opponents each pay $3 to play him, and there are people pledging money for each hour he continues to play. All the money collected goes to muscular dystrophy, and once this feat is accomplished, you would think Mike would just want to sit out the future, but he has more marathon plans ahead. If, if it all goes well and I do this like I think I'm going to do it, I'd like to maybe go racquetball in the summer. So. so far, Mike has lost 11 pounds, and he is beginning to look a bit tired. But as his opponents and his supporters will attest, there's still quite a bit of bounce left in his step. Lucille Caliendo, Eyewitness News, Cromwell. And that's our news. Thanks for watching. For Bob and Ken, I'm Pam Cross. Have a good night. Gentlemen, Mr. Casey, good luck uh, with your new responsibilities now. Coming up next, a record set in Cromwell last night. A young man earning himself a spot in the record book while earning others a chance at life. Stay with us for tonight's Time Out. In sports headlines tonight, the baseball players threaten once again to strike. There's more bickering over free agency between players and owners. The Whalers at home tonight, and CIAC hockey and basketball playoff action continues in full gear. Right Mike now. Mike will have all those stories later on. Wait Ooh, a minute. Okay. Now. Oh, well, I'm, I'm excited about this because mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of stories, said last night on the air, about the people saying they're going to get into the Guinness Book of Records and mm -hmm. set a record and everything mm -hmm. else. And, we run out and we cover them as they start and they never make it. And this young fella did. And he, he might have. They've got to send this thing to uh, New York and then to England and get it notarized and all of that stuff. And he may end up in the 1981 Guinness Book of World Records. 
We're talking about a guy who spent the last five days without getting any sleep. Pat, Jerry, and I have pulled a few all-nighters. Ken Vennett with the CP Telethon. But I have never run into a guy who went for five straight. In Cromwell yesterday, Michael Gazer made his bid for the Guinness uh, Book of World Records while raising over $500 for muscular dystrophy. Time out tonight for a look at his racket. Middletown's Michael Gazer, a marathon man of sorts, during a brief timeout in his quest to set the Guinness Book of World Records record for the continuous playing of tennis. His goal, 120 straight hours, which is five days. This, the fifth day. Mike has already played for 112 hours, only getting five minutes rest per hour. And at this point, he's near the end. What keeps you going? It must be tremendous mind games going on. That's mostly what it is. People talk about getting second wins and after a certain amount of days. It doesn't work, second wins. You start out good, you get bad, and you get worse, and then you get to terrible. And that levels off the terrible. Uh -huh. And whoever can tolerate terrible the best, they're the ones that get second wins, they uh -huh. think. It's almost like fooling yourself, which the mind is, of course, capable of doing. Because despite not sleeping for five days, not eating anything of substance for five days, losing 19 pounds and absorbing the pain of blisters, Michael Gazer presses on. And by 9 o'clock last night, the goal of 120 hours had been realized. And the partying had begun. There were embraces and an impromptu receiving line with handshakes from all. Michael Gazer had challenged himself and won a new Guinness World Record. The key question, was it worth it? Yes. I'd do it again. Would you? I, we thought this, I'd do it again, yeah. They had quite a celebration there with champagne. Now, Michael did not have any champagne. He stuck to ginger ale. If he'd have had a hit of that, he'd have keeled over. And actually, he was taken right to the hospital following what I guess you could call his ordeal when he raised over $500 for muscular dystrophy. And he just may end up in the Guinness Book of World Records 1981 edition. That's time out, Al. Thank you, Mike. He's doing all right tonight, I hope. Yeah, he is. He's watching. You can bet. <laughs> I'll bet. Say, if uh, you've been involved in that annual marathon lately, getting your federal... ...all this, Joan. Within a week or two, I think the word drought will have disappeared from our vocabulary. Well, that is good. But I will still wait for summer after that. <laughs> Thanks. It's 10 minutes after right now. Time for some people in the news. Mike Gazier of Cromwell, Connecticut, recently decided if he wasn't going to make an impact on the tennis world as a tournament player, he'd find another way to do it. And last week he did. The 20-year-old set a new tennis marathon record by playing 120 straight hours of tennis. Now, this beat the last Guinness Book record by 15 hours. Mike played over 300 sets of the game, only taking a 15-minute break every three hours. And he also did not sleep during those breaks. He felt it would be a little hard to shake off the drowsiness after just a short nap. So he was really awake for five days, and he used the break time instead for massages, and he said to eat plates and plates of spaghetti to keep up his strength. And yet still, by the time it was all over, he had still lost 20 pounds. And although he prepared for the ordeal by jogging bare, barefoot for weeks to toughen the soles of his feet, Mike did tell us here at Good Morning America that there were plenty of times that he thought he just was not going to make it. But the constant support of his friends and relatives helped, and along with the knowledge that it was all for a very good cause, Mike's plane helped to raise over $2,000 for muscular dystrophy. And that's people. Right now we go to Jack Anderson for his report from Washington. Good morning, Jack. Good morning, Joan.